Let's go ahead and get started. And again, a friendly reminder, if you would, please wait for the microphone since we are streaming online and state your name and affiliation. Thanks so much. Coach, thoughts on today's game? Hard fought. Hard fought. I thought um, uh, Texas A&M did a swell job. Uh, Coach Royce uh, playing the second game. We knew that it would be a fight. Uh, this is the time of the season that you put records and anything that has happened previously away. And uh, everybody is zero and zero. And I thought, to their credit, that they came out strong. I thought we finished strong, but I thought that they came out strong. But nevertheless, I am super proud of my team because uh, they're amazingly persistent and they didn't give up. Let's talk more about that really quickly. Um, Coach Shadwick called your team tenacious. Um, you got to love the fight today. Absolutely. I, I, I think that those young ladies um, fought like that every day. You know, come in a game and, and try to fight your way back from, um, at times, almost a 20, 25 point deficit uh, without fighting every day in practice. Um, one thing that we always talking about is persevering through the tough times. Tough times will come in a basketball game. Tough times will come in life, but we have to persevere through those times. And I thought they did a good job of pushing through on today and not giving up no matter what. Let's go ahead and open up for questions. Go ahead, Brandon. Brandon Williams, Southland.org. Coach, was there anything that they did early on uh, when they got out to the 14-2 lead? Was, they, was there anything that they did that kind of threw you guys off? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it threw us off, but I just think they came out more aggressive. They came out attacking um, a, a 39 free throws for the game. Uh, that's an aggressive team, and they they capitalized on that. As you look at the stats after the first um, half, that was the difference. I think they were 12 for 16 um, in the first half, and that's just aggression and taking the ball to the basket. So I thought that they came out a little bit more aggressive than us. What were some of the things that you guys were able to adjust uh, at intermission that allowed you to finally start making some headway against them? Um, I think it was all about um, our intensity and making sure that we had the right crew out there who can push the ball and start getting some quick hitters. So um, at times I went with a four guard lineup and one post so that we can have a little bit more quickness out there. Um, also adjustment that we made that really started to help us was we jumped in zone, which is uncharacteristic for us. But at times when you have players in foul trouble and they were being so aggressive, we had to take some of the penetration away by jumping to the 2-3 zone. So I think those adjustments has helped us some. Randy, uh, what were some of the things that you guys were able to uh, say and now allow yourselves to stay motivated and uh, keep your heads up while you were down uh, 22 heading into the end of the third? Um, throughout the whole game, we were just uh, telling each other to just keep our heads up. We knew we had three people to play for, and that was Jewel, Ariel, and Raven, our three seniors. And throughout the game, we just kept telling each other that God got us and that we have each other. And throughout that, you know, I really think that's what really kept us going and kept the, kept us in the game so that we can cut the lead as much as we did. And um, even though we didn't come out with the desired outcome, I really feel like uh, everything is working in God's plan. I mean, when you look, my freshman season, even um, Jules' first three seasons and my sophomore season, you know, we didn't even dream of getting this far. And, you know, even though we only made it to the first round, you know, there's much more in store for us. Jewel, uh, just talk about the progress uh, that this team has made since your time here. Um, we've made major progress, uh, just been believing in the process, and we've built love and trust for each other, and we just became closer as a team and trying to buy into the process and just keep believing. Um, you uh, talk about you know, keeping believing in the process. You know, talk about how that process was able to get you guys back into the ball game. It seemed like you, know, you guys you know, just never felt that you were out of it. Yeah, we just uh, kept fighting and telling each other uh, we can do this. We're going to be here tomorrow and just keep telling each other words of encouragement, just believing no matter what. Did you feel like it was a case, you know, the question for uh, both Coach Dabbitt Port and, uh, you and the two players, was it a case you guys felt like it, maybe you guys ran out of gas when you guys got to within five in the closing minutes? No, we fought to the end. 
Yeah, I mean, everyone fought. Even uh, our sophomore point guard, Danielle Wright, you know, she came off the bench, but she came off the bench with so much energy. And um, she's really been our defensive force on the defensive end, you know, getting steals, getting forcing turnovers. She was she played a really big part on the defensive end and just everyone keeping her um just just keeping her engaged and involved because I know at the end she really started feeling it and you know we just had to keep her together and just just keep everyone together you know I don't feel like we ran out of gas I just feel like we ran out of time amen that's what I was gonna say there's no losers up in here we didn't run out of gas we just ran out of time I figure if we would have got five more minutes we would have been interviewing first instead of second Coach, well, before we let you go, make sure there's no more last-minute questions. I do want to uh, focus on what, what something Randy said because I know there's a lot of folks watching online, the three seniors. Um, I'm going to start with Ariel Davis first. Um, just transformational. Um, the change from Ariel Davis from her freshman year uh, to this year, uh, totally. Physically, she dropped 30 pounds from last year. Um, to coming into this year. Just mentally, she was in a better headspace, and then spiritually, uh, she went to another level. And I'm just so super proud of her. Um, just ran out of words. Uh, many people may not know, Raven Coleman uh, is a walk-on. She, she did not have a scholarship, and for four years, uh, she gave me everything. Every time she's off the court, she's in a boot. Um, she might have a stress fracture, um, but refused to stop playing. She refused to stop playing. She wanted to finish her career uh, on the court. So I just hats off to her. Um, this is the type of fight that these young ladies have inside of them. And they, they're laying a the foundation for those who are coming behind them. And then Jewel Angelo. Uh, when Jewel Angelo uh, signed with the University of New Orleans, uh, I met her in Katy, Texas at the Southland Conference. Uh, we both came to the Southland Conference before we were eligible to play in the conference tournament because we said that we were going to be here one day. The year before we came into the Southland Conference, Jewel drove over a an hour from Manville uh, to get here. And um, we sat in the stands and we said then that we would be back. And I'm glad that we came back her senior year. Of course, it is not the desired result, but she's a big part of why we are here because from the moment that she signed, it was a part of her vision and goal to help get us here as well. So hats off to her through many ups and downs. She's amazingly persistent and I thought that she finished her career strong. I just give all glory to God and I'm very proud of these lady privateers. Again, congratulations on a great Thank season you. and making it here. Thank you for your time. Thank you.